So I'm here with Jason. It's nice to meet you. And I thought maybe we'll start off by you introducing yourself to our audience and perhaps telling us what exactly Game Station is. Oh, Michael, thanks a lot. Thanks for the chance to be here. And on behalf of everybody at Game Station, we really appreciate the opportunity to be at such a, a neat and exclusive event like this. We're super excited. Everybody's pumped. So thanks for having us on board. I got a little bit of a cold. So apologies for any kind of extra breathing I got to do here. But uh, yeah, no, Game Station is a, just in a nutshell, more of a high level view, just so that your, your listeners can kind of get a feel for the flavor of the Pringle here, is it's a Kickstarter of gaming in the sense that we're bringing games and lots of games to the crypto community and working with non-crypto gamers as well to bring them into the fold. Uh, so that people can play games to earn money. That's it in a nutshell. So um, there's a lot of neat things happening in the space, super hot. I'm sure you're going to touch on it. And if the listener will just hang in there for a few minutes, they may find a nugget or two where they can actually use this to uh, help their own wallet at the end right. of the day. So let's see where it goes. Great. Well, I'll have my pen and paper ready to, <laughs> to write down any little gold gems you share. Uh, so essentially, yeah, Kickstarter program, a, a launch pad for gaming projects. Essentially, right. that's in a nutshell, yeah. yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about what your current relationship is with Horizon? How did you meet and what has the experience been like working with them so far? <laughs> oh, man, we have we have how many minutes? So this is this is the this is the one of my probably going to be my funnest question. I'm, I don't yeah. know, but but this is great. So, OK, so. Uh, here's the real story. You always wonder what happened with how did this and then the, what, okay, here's the deal. So about almost four years ago, I went to just a small little boutique crypto conference when the bear market was starting crypto winter, everyone was like, Oh, Bitcoin's dying again. Everyone remembers the drama. If you were in crypto at that time and at this conference was a guy named Rob Viglione, who some of you may know. And he ended up speaking and afterward, I believe it was him and uh, another colleague of mine who many of you know, his name is Dean Steinbeck. Yep. We yep. ended up at the buffet table meeting and talking. And I'm telling you, it was like a snowball from there for the rest of the night, the next day that we just connected and there was just so much synergy in terms of, uh, going in the same direction <clears throat> with whether it was horizon specific with their the privacy and crypto and what they were doing and where they were headed and the momentum they had or marketing because i used to be i was i was heavy i used to be in medical space switched into crypto uh but no i'm sorry i was in the medical space and before crypto i switched into marketing for big box brands and fortune 500 companies and then i went into crypto missed that critical step in around 2000, I don't know, 17 or whatever it was, and almost five years ago. And so, and there I realized, well, it was like a wild west of marketing. I mean, people were just doing some really weird stuff and it wasn't corporate based at all. And I know that marketing and corporate, can be like a bad word with some crypto companies. And I totally understand that, you know, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes, but was trying to be in the experience of being able to share crypto with people so that their adoption could take place. Yeah. There has to be education and explanation on some level or else, you know, you're kind <clears> of, <throat> you could be, you'd be on a treadmill, right? Yeah. So that Rob and I hit it off a lot there and really the rest is, is history. So my experience with them has been amazing. A lot of people don't realize that Vig Leone is one of the sharpest tools in the shed. <laughs> Dean Steinbeck is one of the sharpest tools in the shed. Yeah. And I believe that people are, are still not ready and are not going to see Horizon coming. That's my opinion. Everyone has a dolly button. That's my opinion. But I think it's going to be like a, a Solana thing or an avalanche. Crypto is very reactive. Mm -hmm. And they're going to see what, what's happening with Zendu and they're going to, ah, we got to, uh, you know, get involved. And then you're, we're going to see a rush. This is, yep. this is what I believe is going to happen. 100%. I, I share the same thoughts as well. And yeah, Dean and Rob, they're both superstars on the team. So yeah, we're super lucky to have them. And yeah, as you say, I think a lot of people are sleeping on Zendu at the moment, and it's going to take them by surprise. And they're going to say, what's this project? Where did it come from? 
And yeah. then how yeah. come I didn't know? How come I didn't yeah. realize? How come this? Because they're following yeah. this person or that yeah. person or this newsletter where yeah. it's okay, it'll get out there, right? Yeah, it will. Yeah. It's like, come on, guys, don't you don't you read Barry Silbert's tweets? <laughs> like he's been telling you for quite a while now. <laughs> like, listen up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so with Zendu releasing on December 1st, uh, what possibilities do you see opening up for Horizon within the gaming industry? How, how can Horizon fit in with this ecosystem? So all we need for that question is like a drum roll. In the back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, for, <clears throat> I think this is a, is a great question. I think it's probably somewhat open-ended in that I just like there's, I mean, let's be honest. <clears throat> There's different blockchains out there. Some of them are siloed, some of them aren't. Some of them have more cons and advantages and some of them have more advantages and cons. And devs usually kind of have a preference. You know, they kind of, maybe they're an ETH maximalist or, or whatever. Maybe they just love Avalanche because they bought it at 10 cents. I don't know. Everyone has these, these different preferences. I think Horizon is gonna get a lot of traction in the gaming space because of the way their blockchain operates with the technology behind it. And I think they're also gonna get a lot of traction because of the privacy factor. This is not something that the gaming space has seen a lot of. Mm -hmm. Blockchain is about transparency, right? Blockchain is about being able to have the public ledger, the DLT. Okay, I get that. But there's some people that don't want all their deets out there and they, they don't wanna be doxxed at a moment's notice. And this mm -hmm. is gonna be good. This yep. is going to be good. So, so I think <clears throat> we're going to try and help do it together with GameStation, who's launching games. I mean, we launch games every every few days now, and we're very selective. We're very picky. We don't just – we're afraid that the next scam thing, the next scam area is PDE, which means play to earn. We're mm -hmm. afraid that that's it. So we have a due diligence team. We vet everything. We generally don't take a project unless the game is good, the quality is good, the community behind it is good, the team is good, the tokenomics are good, tokenomics are huge, and game economy has to be dialed in. So there's a lot of factors and a lot of the hoops that the people have to jump through, these gaming companies, before they can go with us. Hmm. So, but I think that with Horizon, this is really going to help the gaming ecosystem because at the end of the day for us, we're not, GameStation isn't trying to kill it and get this huge market share. This is, like I said before, it's not corporate America. It's how do we expand the gaming space and help people make money? Oh, that's very nice. That sounds very choir boy, boy scout of you. It's the truth. When we started GameStation two years ago, when we started developing it, the core concept vision was how can we help people make money and not just be another blockchain? What can mm -hmm. we do? PDE solved that issue in space for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a little bit distracting because I've got a toddler trying to open the door here <laughs> just at that moment, but that's okay. Keeping it real. That's yeah, okay. keeping, keeping it real. real. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my oh, wife. we said hi. Hello that's from right. a Zen and Game Station. Yeah. So, my, yeah, my <laughs> wife's got a hands full at the, at the moment, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so, as you were saying, privacy, super important. We don't want everything out in the open. And I guess with the play to earn space and metaverse and gaming it, there's a whole economy on there with nfts and everything else and we don't necessarily want to see everyone uh, we don't want everyone to see exactly what we own what nfts how much we paid for them how much we sold them for um it seems crazy that that's the standard at the moment um it's just yeah complete opposite to how the real world works and i think it's only a matter of time before privacy um really jumps in and and takes over that's an amazing point. You know, a lot of people, you just said more than a lot of people have really thought through yet. And so I, I validate, commend and confirm that hundred percent. That's a, yeah. a very important area that people haven't really, that hasn't gotten been gotten around to yet, maybe, but yeah. I think this is going to be a nice solution. Yeah. Yeah. And are there any gaming projects in particular that you've thought about and think, ah, oh, Horizon would be a perfect fit. To, to work with them. Are there any that come to mind that you'd like to see Horizon work with? All of them. All of them, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's a that's probably not, that probably doesn't sound like a very good answer, but yeah, honestly, all of them. I mean, I really think there's something to be said for the privacy factor, as you pointed out, you know, mm -hmm. maybe someone owns 10 
cyberpunk or whatever they may own maybe they don't want that out there maybe mm. they don't want everyone to know and so our 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 keeping i guess the question maybe for me is is are keeping payment details private is it absolutely necessary people would argue no some people would argue yes but is it preferred most people would say yeah mm. i mean when you go to a play to win game and you buy something is it just out there for everyone to see who you are, what you've done, and you're already doxxed? No, no. So, so this is something that I think holds a lot of value that it's in discovery mode yeah. at the moment, right? Mm. In a way, we're speculating about how it will play out in the gaming space, but we're all the all the, everything's lined up, the ducks are in a row. So it should, it should move forward very well. And I'd like to see all gaming projects consider it because we're a multi-chain launch pad. Mm. Uh, we're a multi-chain launch pad. So having something like Zen there with this option, I think it's amazing. So yeah, we just, right? So a lot of games come pre-built on X chain. But by doing that, they sometimes will limit or silo or put a glass ceiling in terms of users. Mm. So right by having them start to maybe pour it over or build on some other chain i think there could be a lot of advantages to that great and this year we've seen the incredible rise of play to earn games like axie infinity and metaverse projects like the central land recently that's had a big price explosion and yeah. especially with Facebook recently announcing Meta, it seems the narrative and focus of 2022 will be on the metaverse and gaming. And I wonder how do you see crypto gaming evolving next year? And when do you think the big boys like EA and others will make the jump to crypto? Michael, these are good questions. Yeah. I don't usually get asked this. So, <clears throat> and I appreciate it. Uh, so let's start with the last part first, the big boys, when will they jump in? I can say with certainty, and I have some proof that the big boys are looking at how to do this. They are looking at how to migrate to blockchain or to maybe shift the legacy here or there to blockchain, but it's very difficult for them. I mean, we have to think in terms of a massive corporation that's making tons of money on a model that still works, right? So think Titanic, small rudder. They want to move, but it's like, mm, <clears throat> it's real slow. So in terms of timelines, I don't give any, I don't, I don't, I, I see the gaming, gaming is, is so hot right now. I mean, NFTs are so hot right now. Metaverses are so hot that it's insane. Everything's going to pump in this space. And I don't know how much longer the bull market in Bitcoin may go before we have a drop and we do a little bear and then the next bull comes. But I, I, I think gaming <clears throat> completely makes it through that bull all the way. And I think in the bear, it can still work because like the model for game station, for example, is, is it's more of a, a service that's, that's implement. It's in our lives. We have some, we have some um, charts and whatnot to show this, but in a nutshell, and from just a high level, uh, you know, if Bitcoin crashes, Michael, are you going to stop taking a shower? Are you going to stop going to the store? Right? Are you going to not turn the lights on anymore and not use electricity? Well, you might use less if you're yeah. wall. <laughs> but are you not going to send your kids to school? These are services that you use on a regular basis. Yeah. Studies have shown that when people are depressed or they have lost money, they gain more, not less. Mm. So gaming is kind of interestingly weaving its way into the fabric of the culture as a root, as a service that's key to their lives or implemented into their lives. And this will sustain a bear market well. If the in-game economies of the games and the tokenomics are situated for the gamer benefit, which which many of them are, some some aren't so great. We don't we don't touch or launch those, but we don't know how each game will do. We don't control each team, right? We just mm. help to to go out there with them. So that's a a long-winded answer. Remind me the first parts of the question again, if you wouldn't mind. Um, so how um, do you see crypto gaming evolving next year? Uh, yeah. Oh, because the Axie, right? Yeah, Axie and, and Central okay. Land and yeah. Yes, yes. And sand, sand recently. Sand, yep, yep. Through the roof, right? Yeah. So yeah. we see Meta having a real future. I believe personally that eventually when we get to the point where we have the, the Facebook, 
Facebook is developing a game, which is a metaverse game that people aren't really aware of yet, that when it comes out, it's going to, I think, dwarf the whole social media scene. Yeah. It's going to be huge. And mm. they are, they were very savvy to change their name to meta because that's exactly what it is. And I believe over time, as we're get used to the devices and these different things, the, the VR world, the AR world, virtual reality, augmented reality is going to be somewhat incomprehensible from our real life. Mm. So pretty soon we're going to be spending much more time over here. Look at what you and I are doing. Mm. We're in the, we're in a metaverse in a sense. Metaverse just means everything digital. We pay our bank online. We're talking right now online. We're shopping online. Crypto brought ownership. So crypto brought the ability to, I can own my assets, my NFTs, whereas before that didn't exist. I can spend now in this, specifically in this digital space now. So people are going to be really migrating over there. So I see play to earn going very big. I, th I see people quitting jobs in factories and playing games at home. Um, I see this really unfolding and in some ways, it's amazing. In other ways, we need people. We need skilled people out there who still have skills, not just amazing at moving the the, the toggles to to win the game. So, mm. we we also want to bring educational games into this so that people can still learn, and it's not just about beating the next guy. It's about understanding the world around you for the social, the moral, the ethical, all those things that are important in individuals that those still are are maintained as well. So we're trying to keep our finger on the pulse of everything and it's it's quite extensive yeah definitely there's a, yeah, a lot a lot going on and certainly an exciting future and and you were mentioning as well um when people are depressed and in a bear market you know often play games more that's one thing that we missed during the last bear market we didn't have this whole um play to earn space so it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out during the next market cycle um because i know even a lot of the projects that i'd invested in um, during that last bear cycle, some of them hadn't even had staking launched yet. So they weren't earning any yield for me at all during that, that time. So it was uh, a lot harder for many people to really, you know, to survive that bear market because they're not getting anything from some of those projects. Whereas maybe the next cycle, we, we can play games and still earn. And it's like, oh, okay, I can get through this. This is a, another another thing just to, to keep you going. And I think that's going to be really um interesting to see how that unfolds great point we're all excited to see how it unfolds too it's it's hard to kind of speculate but we can look at the past and try and see how it rhymes with the future to one degree or another so yeah yeah we'll see soon i maybe great well thanks very much for your time jason it's been wonderful having you on and chatting and really excited to see what you do with horizon going forward and i'm sure many people out there watching will be keeping a close eye on game station now oh uh, it, it, listen the pleasure is all mine thank you for having me on, on on behalf of all the again on behalf of everybody at game station thank you to you and everybody at horizon you guys have an amazing team top tier triple a grade project without a doubt and we definitely see you guys moving forward and, and in any way we can assist or help, love to do it. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Bye-bye.